First Avengers, The Wasp of World War II. This is Texas, cradle of our Army's Air Force. This is an AAF field, too. But over headquarters rides a strange little girl gremlin called Pippinella. And out of those buses are stepping girls. Girls who give a new angle to an Air Force story. They're wasps, women's Air Force service pilots. The Women Air Force Service Pilots, or the WASP, of World War II are an example of debate and diplomacy in history. These women are an example of something that has impacted our country here in the United States. For example, it led the way for female pilots, so these experiences of courage for women could have a lasting effect on our country, future, and beyond. Numbering about 1,100 women, they broke standards of their time and paved the way for female pilots of the future, showing that woman could do anything. Uh, my name is Sarah Byrne Rickman. If they have, how have the WASP influenced you to become a pilot? Yes, they did. The WASP are, are the ones who really gave me the secondary and the final push to do it. Amelia inspired me, but it took the WASP to make me do it. But who exactly were the WASP? Why were they formed? And how did they help during World War II? 1942. A man who partook in the initiation of the WASP was General Henry H. Arnold. He was born in Cloudland, Pennsylvania on June 25, 1886, and is one of the greatest military figures in the history of America. Progressing quickly through his ranks, he was finally, on September 29, 1938, granted Chief of Steps of the Air Corps. When there was a shortage of male pilots in 1942, Jacqueline Cochran proposed the idea of female pilots to General Henry H. Arnold. Jacqueline Cochran also wrote a letter to Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt. She supported the idea of female pilots. After the proposal to General Arnold, the Women's Flying Training Detachment, WFTD, was formed. At that time, Nancy Love's Women's Auxiliary Firing Squadron, WAF, was also active. Later, the two groups joined together as the WASP. There were a number of disagreements on the WASP, such as whether or not they should be militarized or even formed in the first place. General Henry H. Arnold worked through his connections, and in the end, the WASP program was approved. However, they would not receive certain benefits, such as general insurance, transportation from home to the training base, and even burial provisions. They would also hold civilian status, unlike the male pilots of that time. To be accepted into the program, recruits had to be within the age of 21 to 35 years old. They also needed to have a pilot's license along with 35 flight hours. About 25,000 women applied to be a WASP. Although 1,820 were accepted, and only 1,074 graduated. The first class arrived at Municipal Airport in Houston, Texas in a cattle truck. Later the program was moved to Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas. There they trained for seven and a half months. Other classes arrived too, and among them was Barbara Erickson London. I'm Kimberly Johnson, and I'm the Director of Special Collections at Texas Women's University. B.J. Erickson was actually a, she was one of the WAFs. So she was one of the originals. Born July 1st, 1920 in Seattle, Washington. Barbara Erickson enrolled in a civilian pilot's training program in her late teens. A class of only four women, Barbara Erickson quickly became a training instructor and flew both land and sea planes. She was the 14th woman to qualify for the WAFS. At 23, she became the commander of 80 female pilots for the Long Beach 6 Faring Group and later the WASP. In 1943, she flew 8,000 miles in 10 days. It was for these flights that she received the Air Force Air Medal given to her by General H. Arnold. She was the only WASP to receive such a medal, Long Beach Airport later named a street in her honor. 1943 In April of 1943, the first class graduated and were assigned various Air Force tasks. To train, they attached flags as targets to the tail of their planes for ground and air gunners to practice on, with real ammunition. The women of the WASP logged more than 60 million miles in less than two years, and flew almost every kind of military aircraft, such as B-26 and B-29s. Even though the WASPs were a non-combatant team, still, there were consequences. 38 WASPs 
lost their lives in accidents. 11 died during training, and 27 were killed on active duty missions. I lost six girls of my girls in Long Beach were killed, yes. A couple were mid-airs, <clears throat> uh, one couple were landing accidents. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very sad. 1944. Due to debate, the program came under threat in 1944 when the urgent need for pilots lessened. Civilian instructors feared being drafted into the Army, so they lobbied to have the WASP jobs. Therefore, on December 20th, 1944, the WASP disbanded and the program was deactivated. The WASP last class, as it was called, graduated, but only served two weeks and a half before returning home like the others. This outcome affected the relationship between the U.S. Air Force and female pilots. It showed the Air Force that the female pilots could fly planes, and better than they thought. They didn't disregard their abilities or ignore their capability to fly, as the female pilots had freed up the male pilots so that they could fly in combat. 1976 to 1977 Several years after the WASP flew in planes, the U.S. Air Force began to accept female pilots into their program. They stated that this was the first time they had allowed women to fly their planes. This outcome was both a failure and a success, for after all they had done, the WASP had been forgotten. But in being forgotten, they would then ensure that they would be remembered. The WASP banded together, lobbying Congress to be granted military status. Finally, in 1977, nearly three decades since they had served, they were militarized. While it took, it took, you know, over 30 years to get there, they did achieve militarization. 2009 through 2010. Today, we are gathered here in Emancipation Hall to honor the courageous patriotism of the women's Air Force service pilots, to honor them with the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor Congress can bestow. In 2009, President Obama signed bills granting the women Air Force Service pilots Congressional Gold Medals as a tribute to their lasting influence. And in March 2010, the WASP were awarded these medals, the highest honor bestowed upon individuals with great achievements. At the time of the award giving, approximately 300 WASPs were alive. It was a long time in coming, is that we're, there's people know them. People are finding out about them. Um, that part of our history, our nation's history, wasn't part of what we knew about. Um, just the same way like the Code Talkers in Tuskegee, you know, and now we, that they are part of our national identity when it comes to history. The WASP exceeded the expectations of women pilots. They went against the standard of that time for the U.S. government now had available male pilots to help in combat, while the female pilots did other work. However, the WASP weren't as appreciated as they should have been, as shown by how long it took for them to be recognized. For this, like all other veterans of that war, they need to be applauded, thanked every day, and remembered for what they did when we needed them most. I, mean, I want them to be remembered by everybody every i don't care how old you are i don't care where you live i don't care about anything what you do what your interests are what your hobbies are whether you're a pilot or you're not a pilot i want everybody to know about their story we should remember the boss for being key figures during world war ii for prevailing even though debates question their ability for doing the one thing at that time that people thought they couldn't do they flew so long, ladies. Go to it. Someday you'll be able to sit down in the evening with your husbands, who will probably be flyers, and remind them that during the war, you did your part. Keep them flying, Pippinella. 